certified badass in film and TV, Julianne Dawson. And I'm an actor, artist, creator extraordinaire, Danny Clark. We were asked to come up with six questions. So here we are and action. action. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Let's do one more. Okay, okay, great. And that's it. <laughs> Julie, who or what are your biggest influences in your craft? For me, I'm really drawn to very female empowered characters that are intelligent, they're badasses, they're at the top of their careers and really uplift and empower others. To me, some of those characters would be Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. I'm a huge Wonder Woman fan, and also Charlize Theron. I love any kind of film that she's done. I just, I've studied her acting very closely and her acting choices are just, they're incredible. So anyone who's badass, basically. <laughs> How about you? What would you say is your biggest influence as an actor? Right now, my biggest influence as an actor is River Phoenix. I keep re-watching my own Private Idaho and I think his, along with other films, all the films that he's done that he has this vulnerability that um, I hope to emulate in my own craft. And so, yeah, he's definitely someone that is inspiring me right now. Julie, what would you say is your greatest strength as an actor? My greatest strength now used to be my weakness, actually. I used to have such a hard time being vulnerable and I think that has to do with like how I was brought up as a kid with my background with abuse and everything but now I think with acting what it's taught me is to really allow myself to be present and be vulnerable and just get caught up in the moment with somebody else and I think that's a really beautiful thing so just being there and allowing myself to feel those feelings and be present with another and just be open to the creative process. So Danny, what would you say is your greatest strength as an actor? I think my greatest strength in general is my empathy for others. And I think that is the reason why I am an actor is I think sometimes with the most complex or mentally disturbed or you know villainous characters or roles, you have to find a way in to play them truthfully and and come from an honest place and to me your way in to understanding somebody like that is finding the empathy for them and and how they became the way they are and so i think that sort of realization of connecting the two dots between the empathy i have for people in my personal life and um realizing like what to do with that and and um once i finally connected it to him like, well, it could work for this acting thing. I think it um, kind of a light bulb went off in my head. Julie, if you could give advice to aspiring actors, what would you tell them? I would tell them to just be persistent as hell. And in this business, you just, you cannot take anything personally. We are in the most... <laughs> probably the toughest business in my opinion. There's just, there is so much rejection and just don't take it personally. If you go on auditions, audition, 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 the auditioning is really your job. And then if you book, you book a, a gig, like that's great. It's, that's part of your career, but auditioning is the job and you cannot be afraid to you know, face your fears, get on, get in the auditioning room and do it over and over and over again. And that's how you get better. I can't even tell you how many times I've been on so many auditions and then you just book a job and it, and just like ride with that feeling and stay in that energy because after you book that gig, it literally snowballs everything in this amazing momentum forward. And then maybe you won't book anything for like <laughs> a certain amount of time, but never lose faith in yourself. And I think that's one thing that a lot of actors tend to do is they have a lot of self judgment. Oh, well, I didn't book this. And 
their their self esteem and their self love tends to like go down, but it's it's not anything personal, and you don't know what's going on in the casting room. They might put out a casting for like you know like a blonde girl, or and then they go with you know something completely different. Like that happens all the time. So again, like just don't take it personal. Keep moving. Have confidence in yourself, and just put one foot in front of the other. So how about for you, Danny? What would be some advice that you could give some aspiring actors? I think what I would say is you have to love it. You really have to love it because like you're saying, there's so much rejection and so much competition and it can be hard. And so you have to, it has to be bigger than you and you have to, um, yeah, really love it to be willing to go on the journey of auditioning and putting yourself out there and being vulnerable. And I would tell them, you do have to balance. I think Bed Midler says something in an interview where like you have to balance this like realistic mentality, but then also you have to be delusional and you have to be no, like you, I think she says something like you have to know that you're not that great, but believe you're the best thing since sliced bread or something along those lines. <laughs> I just think, I, I think it's so true. And I think, um, yeah, and, and the sort of to play off what you said, I think you have to um, stay grounded because it is fast and there's a lot m moving parts and the auditioning process can be stressful. And so you have to find a way to stay grounded. And, you know, when you walk in the room or when, you know, the camera's on that you are confident in, in your craft and your preparation. Julie, do you enjoy the audition process? Why or why not? And what do you do to prepare? I think my enjoyment for auditioning can really depend <laughs> on what the project is. I know that's so bad, but I mean, there are some auditions where I'm like, oh my God, this role was meant for me. Like I <laughs> feel it in my bones and I'm just like, yes, like this is me, right? And then other auditions, I'm like, I'm not going to be upset if I don't get this. Like, <laughs> it's terrible to say, but I mean, like, know what I like and like, you know, especially if it's a company or like a brand or a director, like I really am passionate about, then of course I'm going to be really excited. And I mean, I treat auditions in some ways similar and then other ways very different. So for commercial, I don't put, you know, as much like time into like my, what I imagine my character to be. Like I, I do a little bit, but when I get sides for like a feature or a TV show or something more in depth, I start with research. Like, is this based on a true story? Is this a real character based on someone's life? I'll do a little bit of research. If there's anything in the sides that I am not familiar with, like I will research everything. <laughs> like I will scour the internet for as much information as I can. So I am starting to embody that in myself already as that character. So I, I start with the research number one, I'm a Capricorn. So it's, you know, I'm very like in my head a lot. <laughs> and then I'd say another approach that I have is I just go through the sides and just like read it. So I fully understand the beginning, the middle and the end, like where the story is going. Then I get into the motivation of the character, like, what is driving the character in the scene? What do I really want? And how can I get it? What's preventing me from getting what I want? And just having those thoughts in my head and like going over the sides so many different times. And then also reading the sides in different ways, different speeds, uh, different pitches. Uh, maybe I have an accent or like, you know, just like finding little parts of me, Julie, in this character too, that I can bring a little flavor to. Yeah, to just make it interesting and, and also think of ways that aren't gonna be like, oh, well, every actor is gonna think of doing this. Right. How can I be different or, or like phys physicality wise, those little quirks of the character, I guess you could say I really think about a lot before an audition. Totally. Uh, yeah. How about you? What uh, do you enjoy the auditioning process? And I mean, what's your, what's your process like? Yeah, I think um, 
you're not alone in with what you what you said. I think I have a love hate relationship with the audition process because I think with, with the second part of the question about how do you prepare, in in essence, you know, auditioning you have everything against you. You have most likely the time because it needs to be turned in at a certain date, which usually is last minute. <laughs> yeah. um, and and then, you know, sometimes you're alone and you're, if you are reading with somebody, it's only over a Zoom. And so you're acting with a wall. And so everything is pointed against you. And so the, my preparation, I think there's a difference for preparation. There's prepar preparing for an audition and then there's preparing for a role, which I think are two different things. Mm -hmm. And so to prepare for an audition, the sides and any information they give me about the character are like my Bible. And I think if written well, there's a lot of hidden treasures in the, in the sides that they give you that you can, you know, figure out who you are, who you are in relation to others and the world that you're in, the pace of the moment that you're in and all these things. And it is a love hate because, you know, although it can be, stressful and you're, you you want to do well and everything's pointed against you. I will say that with every audition that I do, I feel like they are preparing us in a way for what is to come. In essence, that I, I think with every audition, there is a takeaway from it. And it's even, you know, when you step aside and you, you, you know, you're less concerned about booking or whatever, and you're more like, what can I also learn from this audition to better myself as a more prepared actor. So yeah, it's, it's a give and take with auditioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just going to make one more note of that too, is anytime you get an audition and for other actors that may be watching this, just take it as an opportunity to do what you love mm -hmm. and like, don't stress about it. I mean, of course there's like a stress component because everything is so last second. They wanted it yesterday, you know? Right. So just, take the time to enjoy being in the moment and doing what you love. Yes, because you, like you're saying, you know, allow yourself to have fun. And I think with auditioning and, you know, and what I've learned and still learning about auditioning is, and, or, and creating something is that the more you step away and get out of the way of it, me, Danny Clark, or you, Julie Dawson, the less you focus about you and what you think and you get out of your way, there is a channeling, I believe, of some sorts that comes through and allows you to tap into the performance you want to give. And that goes with not just acting. I think that goes with other types of creating, anything, painting, anything artistic and yes, creation. Absolutely. A hundred percent on the same page with you. What has acting taught you about yourself and about creating in general? I think what I really discovered about myself is that I have so many aspects to myself. I just feel like I'm able to really tap into some characters that have a real darkness in them and also characters that have a lot of light. They're very bubbly. And I guess where I'm going with that is kind of to piggyback off of what you said about channeling things. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just feel like as humans, as multidimensional beings, we do actually have all these aspects to ourselves. And I feel like I do the same thing. I do channel the character, <laughs> which sounds a little crazy. So I feel like I've become much more confident in stepping into a challenging role because I'm able to channel that. I'm not afraid to go into the dark places right? I'm not afraid to be vulnerable, as I was saying before. So I feel like what acting has taught me too is to just really let go of fear, right? Mm -hmm. Be vulnerable and to allow myself to just be, be whoever I want to be. Well, I think too is like kind of going off what you were just saying is, you know, with the channeling and everything, I think, you know, we as artists, or the more, I guess, the ego side of us wants it to be perfect. And, and by striving for perfection, you don't allow yourself to do the job or you put yourself in a trap where you're not able to perform because you're striving for something that isn't real. And I think the channeling comes when 
you finally let yourself go and decide to have fun with it because you're not being the you that you normally are throughout your normal life, work life or whatever. And so I think something that I've learned about myself as well is like not to, um, I don't know where we're going with this. <laughs> Well, I, I think I know you're, I know what you're getting at. And yeah. just to add on, I think it's like really letting go of resistance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. Put a pin on it. <laughs> <laughs> if you could put yourself in any character, any film, or be a part of the cast, past, present, or future, what would it be and why? I'm really struggling to answer this question because... I have so many answers for this, but I will stick to this one to make it easy. I just rewatched Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And I think when you watch that movie, you see where a lot of references from other movies came from. And I just think it's a classic. It's iconic. And, you know, I grew up outside of Chicago and the suburbs. So the fact that the location's there, it's just the cherry on top. I love that movie. It's great movie, classic. great performance. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> What about you? Where would you place yourself if you could any and any time? I think I'd have to say I would be in Wonder Woman. I would love to be in Amazon or totally. actually just to work with Patty Jenkins. Like, hello, Patty Jenkins. I'm a vegetable <laughs> to hire. Uh, I, I love Patty Jenkins as a director, like, and just to be able to work with her and, you know, Gal Gadot, obviously. And just, I, I love everything that Wonder Woman stands for. Another mm -hmm. film I, I think would be Atomic Blonde. She's like the female James Bond. And of course, you know, I love that. Louise Theron. So it's a hard choice. I mean, yeah. Wonder Woman is my number one though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and call us and book us in your next movie. We come as a pair. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Cut. <laughs>